So one of the things I do, which I touched on a little earlier, is work with people and not identifying themselves as sick. Yep, I love it's, that. It, it's not that you're denying it or you're being blind to it because you're doing something about it, but don't hold on to that story. Mm. Now there's another story that you're gonna be able to verbalize and write about you. Hey friends, welcome back and welcome in. If you are new here, my name is Grace Shockey and I'm super glad that you are here. This channel is all about helping you get healthy for good. And today we are talking with one of my favorite people and dear friends, Virginia Harper. She is a macrobiotic nutritionist, a teacher, and just an amazing woman all around. She was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis at the age of 19, had a stroke, and then lived through seven years of pretty severe sickness before she was told that she only had about five more years to live, so she wasn't gonna make it to 30. And she took matters into her own hands and she just started learning everything she could about health, about food, about just healing yourself through intuitive eating. And the result is a 40 year career in this amazing field and she's helped so many other people and this is just a really fun and interesting conversation. I think whether you have a pre-existing condition or not, you will find some nuggets in here. She's just a really sweet person too. So do stick around and enjoy. Virginia, hi. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> um, so how did you get started in macrobiotics and can you tell us a little bit about your journey? I know you had sort of a sure. crazy start. Yes, yes. Um, well, I discovered macrobiotics mm -hmm. um, over 40 years ago, really wow. now. Um, and I say discover because I was looking. I really? was desperate of looking. I had been six for seven years before that, uh, in and out of hospitals, Whoa. no no concrete answers. What were you sick with? Well, I got what? diagnosed with two autoimmune conditions, mm -hmm. which autoimmune, the word autoimmune was new back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. But one was a blood condition, which caused me to have strokes. Mm -hmm. Very long name, Takayasu arteritis. And um, which it, it, I had stroke in 19. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. 19. And I was a gymnast, so oh. really there shouldn't have been a reason for me to have a stroke. You were active weekly? Yeah. I was in college. Oh. I was, you know, and I had this stroke. And then along the same time, which now I can look back and understand because I understand my health mm -hmm. now, I was having problems since I was. 13, 14, a lot of digestive issues. Mm. Now I understand all that goes together, mm -hmm. but back then it was two different conditions. Mm. And they finally diagnosed me with Crohn's disease, colitis. Mm. And I say finally because it took them six years to finally oh, give me so a name. So you were 25? Yeah, I was in, yes. That's and, crazy. Yeah, and I Whoa. was in and out of hospitals because I would have flare-ups Mm. And they couldn't do anything for me. And if you know anything about digestive and inflammatory flare-ups, there's nothing stays in. And oh, you so get, you're just eating and then immediately and, yes. you're just releasing. And in my case, That's I like was dusty. bleeding out too. Oh, I was wow. diarrhea and bleeding out. Whoa. So they would put me on heavy drugs, steroids back then to slow everything down, let my bowel rest. So mm -hmm. I was on IVs. I would spend a good week to 10 days in the hospital just to get settled. Whoa. Then I would go home with no better answers. And I was told not to eat fiber, not to eat um, bulk. Mm -hmm. Wait, what is bulk? A bulk is the, um, the food, the food has combinations of fibers mm -hmm. and certain carbohydrates in there to form a stool, Oh. okay? And so you need that bulk to do that. To do that, because mm -hmm. if you eat processed foods all the time, you mm -hmm. don't have that in order for the stool to form. And when the stool forms, is when you pull everything out with it that's not supposed to be in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, oh. you learn a lot about these parts of your body. <laughs> Never knew that, but <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. You too. I know how stools so work. Right. Right. Always no. look. <laughs> you know, but. That was my my problem. I, I in my younger years, I was going from constipation to diarrhea, constipation oh to diarrhea until until Crohn's developed. And you're like you're a kid. Yeah, you're yeah. Like, I'm, I'm in college. 
enjoyed your life. Like, yeah. How, how was that personally? Like, you know, it was interesting because looking back at it, I don't remember going poor me right right, right at the beginning. I was kind of in shock mm -hmm. that this was happening to me. A stroke at nineteen. Yes. Yeah. Crazy. And I lost my ability to speak. I was paralyzed on my right side. So I was in survival mode. Mm -hmm. I just wanted each day to be better and better. Right. And that's what I focus on. Yeah. It wasn't until I had doctors sitting there telling me, you're never going to be well. You may die before you're 30 because of the blood condition. And your colitis, your Crohn's, is going to make you malnourished. You're eventually going to have to have your colon out. Oh it God. wasn't until that point that I started going, oh, wait, wait, what's going on? Mm -hmm. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. Then I this started is not going, my life. No. Yeah. Then I started going, why me? Yeah. But up to that point, you're in survival mode. You're just like, I'm, I, I need to get past yeah. this. You don't have time to interest. Right. <laughs> and then I got a little desperate because yeah. I was getting nowhere with the medical. They were saving my life. They were keeping me from bleeding out. They mm -hmm. were keeping me from stroking. They were keeping all the emergency situations they're great at. Yeah. But nobody was sitting there telling me your your quality of life is going to be better. Mm -hmm. You're going to get well. You are going to heal. Nobody ever said that. I had this gloom and doom future, mm -hmm. the short future I had in front of me. Oh, so you were 25 and they were saying you had yeah. five years, basically. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yo. And so I just reached out to my family, really. I said, help, help me find something. Mm -hmm. I, this can't be the only answer. Mm -hmm. And I was praying so hard for answers, anything. And back then, we didn't have Google. We didn't <laughs> have all the you know, um, uh, resources we yeah. have now to just pick up anything and get some information about mm -hmm. your health. At least going in one direction. Yes. It might not be the right one, but you can try something. Exactly. But, so you were just in the dark back then. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I was born in Chile. Okay. And I lived there until I was about eight years old. So I can remember my grandmother going to the kitchen and to your yard to get a remedy. Whoa. I can still remember. That's beautiful. Yeah, that she would put together stuff to make us feel better. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to find something like that. Mm -hmm. And macrobiotics was, at that time, had a reputation for cleaning out the body, bringing the body back to balance. Mm -hmm. It was very popular with cancer at the time. Mm -hmm. But I, we, my dad found a counselor and I went to talk to him and he said, okay, this is what's breaking down your body and that's the first time I ever had a food and body connection. Mm. You know, we eat to get energy. Right. We eat to get the protein. We eat to get the vitamin C. It, 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 at that age, is that knowledgeable while you're eating? Yeah. You know, it's still in college, the pizza and beer at midnight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> food is food. I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. So for the first time, I began to look at things differently. Now, being Spanish, I do have to say in our household, mm -hmm. that when we managed, we did cook a lot. Mm -hmm. And we cooked fresh. Mm -hmm. And so it really wasn't until I was more on my own and off to college. And that's and then, when it kind of hit. Yeah, right? that's when it really hit. Mm. And uh, I will say college campuses are not known for their food. I think it's getting better now, but um, I have a memory of going when I was, my sister was looking at schools and we went to, yeah. I'm going to say it, MTSU. <laughs> I was going to say it, I'm not going to name names, but we went to the local university here, like the middle college yeah. in Tennessee. and. We saw KFC, Pizza Hut, <laughs> Chick Fil A. That was the food court, and I was like, seriously, yeah. Yeah. people in you know they're trying to learn, they're trying to sit here all day and like get better and work on themselves, but you're feeding them like depressing yes. food. It's yes, it's pretty wild. Yes, and then there's nothing more depressing than fast food. Yes, because of what it does to the inside of you. And I think that that, that yes. connection for a lot of people isn't there. Like to your point, you hadn't you hadn't thought about that. No. But I've even noticed in my own body, and I know about food, and I know how it affects, sometimes I will go a few days and I eat like more processed yeah. or packaged food, and all of a sudden I'm just kind of sleepy and yes. feeling down, and yes. it really, it does affect you on even, like does. a simple level. But anyway, so yeah, you're so, on your own. You're so I'm finally mm -hmm. 
seeing this connection mm -hmm. and and my counselor you know pretty much outlined this was happening in your body mm -hmm. and you need to regenerate instead of degenerate mm -hmm. so you need to supply the raw material for your body to do what it's meant to do anyway, mm -hmm. with it, which is regenerate. We're always regenerating ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is that an important principle That's of a, microbiotic? Well, it's important the principle of health. Well, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so and so the part about the macrobiotic that makes it unique because you know it's not really vegan, it's not really vegetarian, it's about whole life. Mm -hmm. Macrobiotic is whole life. Is that literally the definition? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so what do you do in your life that creates the whole life? We start with metabolism mm -hmm. because that's how you metabolize food nourishment mm -hmm. and that's how you metabolize life. Can you break down metabolism really quickly? Because I feel like a lot of us have this concept yes. of like metabolism is how I don't get fat or <laughs> something like that. What is it, what it, is it is metabolism? It's just more than that. <laughs> <So> <laughs> metabolism you. is the... Is the uh, mechanical um, uh, structure or mechanical um, automatic mm -hmm. system in the body. You don't have to think about it. It just okay. happens, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the process of which you take in nourishment and break it down, mm. okay? Okay. So that this is where fast metabolism comes in or sluggish metabolism comes in. Mm -hmm. So some foods perk you up and some foods slow you down. Mm -hmm. Now the energetic component of macrobiotics comes in and helping people understand the combinations because mm -hmm. we know where to get protein. Mm -hmm. We know where to get vitamin C. We know where to get our, our, our nutritional components. Mm -hmm. but, we, but what we don't realize is there's an energetic component to food also. Oh, okay. So if you eat too much hard, dry, salty chips, let's say, mm -hmm. they're healthy, they're the healthiest ones I can get they're at the store. Or yes. whatever. Yeah. But I'm munching on them totally, your pancreas is gonna get tight. Oh. Your liver is gonna get tight. Your salt is gonna affect your kidney and your blood flow. And but that's I'm because eating. there's not enough moisture. Right, because, because the energy of that food is very contracting. Mm. As opposed to if you're eating a lot of smoothies mm -hmm. and raw foods and juices, all healthy, mm -hmm. but you're eating too many of those and Only for salt. your metabolism, you know, you, you tip it over. And all of a sudden, you're kind of spacey, you're, you, begin to, you begin to develop diseases that we consider damp cold mm -hmm. because those food items create a damp and coldness in the body. So oh, your mind starts- Does that manifest as like, my feet are cold, my hands are cold? That's the simple part of it. That's the most obvious, but mm -hmm. it's more of cramping when, during your periods oh. or, or more when you work out, your muscles spasm more, you know, you mm -hmm. begin to have symptoms. Because it's all energy. tight, it's yeah. not warm anymore. Yeah, but you you created coldness mm -hmm. in the body. Yeah. Interesting. And so, so <laughs> sorry, I think we rabbit trail there, but thank yeah, you for explaining yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's important because at first, like me, yeah, I didn't want to know all that. Yeah. Just tell me what I need to do to get better. Right. Just give me like, the okay, ABCs. I'm just, I want to feel good. Yes, I, I want my diarrhea to stop. Yeah. I want to avoid dying at 30. <laughs> and this guy's giving me hope. He's saying, yeah. well, see how far your body takes your healing. Mm -hmm. And we'll provide the proper nutrition as well as energetic components that need to go in mm -hmm. to drink hot things for you to do you know certain therapies mm -hmm. to to and you mentioned for you right there is that is that because every, yeah. everybody is different yeah. we'll get into that later right yes, I just wanted yeah. to... yes okay and I'm glad you picked up on that yeah because there are general microbiotic uh, principles mm -hmm. Everybody does well by chewing their food really well. I remember that. <laughs> we went on a trip. Whoops. We went on a trip together a few yes. years ago. And you were telling me that you should chew between 25 and 50 yes. times for like depending on the food. Is that yeah, right? Yes. That's, that blew my mind. I'm like totally a three bite as well. 
In fact, I remember that. I still think of you moments where I eat too <laughs> fast and like, Virginia would not be proud of me. And it's something you do have to train. Yeah. Because you do have to keep the food to the front of your mouth mm -hmm. so you don't trigger the swallow. Mm -hmm. You have to not drink while you eat so the enzyme from the saliva, from the parotid gland can release mm -hmm. into the food, which breaks so it triggers down. Your juices. It right? triggers juices, but the most important job is that it breaks down the carbohydrates oh. in the food. And we all have become carbophobic, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, this is where you can balance that. This is where you take care of the extra carbs you're taking in. Whoa, that's super interesting. Just the chewing, you know? Oh. So all those general principles mm -hmm. will help anybody. Mm -hmm. Then you would get into somebody who's hurting, who has symptoms, who has a disease. And then it becomes more individualized. Mm. Because even though I have Crohn's colitis, and that's most of my audience now, most of my clientele now is inflammatory bowel disease, mm -hmm. everybody's different. Yeah. So I give you a protocol to settle you down, but then pretty soon we have to look at what your triggers are, mm -hmm. whether physically, emotionally, environmentally. Mm. And everybody's is a little different. That's interesting that you look at emotions. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's a part of it? That's actually... Yeah, if you think of our emotional center, it's very much our gut system. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. our intuition, our gutsy nature. Yeah. <laughs> all comes from that particular organ system. And in Chinese medicine, we learn that organ systems are paired up and certain, all of them harbor emotions. And so the emotional state of someone is very much has to do with what organ system is either overactive or underactive. The wow. one that comes to mind, especially during COVID, <laughs> was the lungs. The lungs oh. were so affected by this virus, mm -hmm. but the lungs also harbor depression. Whoa. Harbor. I didn't know that. Yeah. Super and so as I taught during that time, I really had people focus in on their lungs and do everything possible to keep the lungs vital and healthy and breathing deep and breathing outside mm -hmm. because you didn't want to create an environment for the virus to live in. Yeah. And and then create trigger the depression on top of it. Whoa. You know? So I look at that too, of course. That's because super interesting. yeah. Because I saw my own healing development, yes, pretty quickly within the first week I started this, mm -hmm. my symptoms began to settle down after seven years. That's... After drugs, after medicines. Whoa. And the food is what did it. And I had to turn everything into baby food for myself because I wasn't even digesting. By the chewing or by like blending it? Physically? Well, by the preparation of it yeah. and by chewing. Yeah. And, and then I graduated from there. But it was retraining my intestines to take oh. in fiber in bulk. Yeah, because you've literally been avoiding it yeah. for the doctor's instructions. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So what were you eating then? What Do you remember like that first week? Oh, yeah. yeah very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because people tell me, gosh, it's been 40 years and you haven't had a flare-up. I said, no. Whoa, so what, what, that's and, and now when I get, you know, colonoscopies, yeah. um, there's no trace. I, there's Seriously. no trace that they I even tell had you. it. No. In oh. fact, I've had a couple of doctors tell me, oh, you were misdiagnosed. Mm. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> For seven years, I don't think so. <laughs> and look, at, yeah, look at my records. Look yeah. at my you know, blood work. But they can't I, believe it based yeah, on no, where you are now. No, That's because so in cool. the medical world, there is no cure mm -hmm. for these conditions. Whoa. In the medical uh, library, you look up these conditions, the only cure, they don't even call it a cure, is to eventually take the colon out. That's not a cure. No, because that, that doesn't mean your body has stopped making the condition. Yeah. And that's one point I want to bring up, and yeah. this is a good time to bring it up. Macrobiotics lifestyle mm -hmm. is about taking responsibility for yourself. Mm in oh, your own huge. health and you become the manager 
of your health instead of the manager of your disease. Whoa. Yeah. Can you say that again? Yes. That's, it oh my moves God, that's you. It, it moves you away from the victim Whoa. mode. Yes. I've just been learning about that this week, in fact. There's, I heard a podcast on, you know Lewis Howes? He has a podcast called School of Greatness on YouTube. Oh, wow. It's, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I'll send it to you after okay. this. But um, he had a guest on, I can't remember his name, but he actually lives here in Nashville, too. He's friends okay. with like Ann Patch and Parnassus Books. But oh, wow. Anyway, yeah. he, he, his whole life principle is talking about who are you going to be? The victim, the hero, the villain, or the guide. Wow. And it's like, choose who you are, and some days you're gonna be all four, and some days you're gonna be one, but if there was a snapshot looking at your life, and the audience was looking at you as a character, who would they put you as? And wow, it's, that's beautiful. It's been, I think it's fascinating that you yeah. brought that up too, because it's yeah. such a huge concept. When you realize that like, doctors and, you know, which they do a great job, to your yeah. point, of like saving yes. lives, but they are not, living in your body. They no. don't know who and you are. And they put you in the victim mode really quick. Real quick. Yeah. Because, no, I'm sorry, you can't do anything about this. Mm. Bad luck. That's all we can do for you. I mean, that was, that was, did you say 40 years ago? Yes. So You're still even here. now, yes. Even you look great. Like, <laughs> thank you. Living your best life. Yes. Living oh, your life What if you had listened? Yeah. I mean, you know, when I think back, and I was scared. Yeah. I, for seven years, I had doctors from Mass General Hospital in Massachusetts mm -hmm. down to Vanderbilt telling me all these gloom and doom. You're not going to live long. You can't have children. You mm -hmm. can't, you know, this is diseases that are not curable. And hopefully we'll have medicines to keep you, you know, uh, comfortable. Oh, my gosh. You That's know, and you have to stop your activity. I was the gymnast in college. To be told not to be active was almost as hard as being told you can't have kids. This is your vascular system. It's your life. It. Yeah. It's your life. And, <laughs> and, and, and then to have somebody give me a little bit of hope, yeah, I, I grabbed it. Yeah, for sure. But very tentative because I thought, okay, I'll give this a try. If it doesn't work, then, you know. And within that first week when I saw results and you asked me what I ate, mm -hmm. one of the things that have motivated me through the years is to stay on and develop my health mm -hmm. into sustainability because mm -hmm. many diets, you do great in the diet, mm -hmm. you do great in the program, mm -hmm. you can't sustain it. Yeah. This is about sustaining mm -hmm. and learning how to sustain. Was that I never wanted to go back to that first starting point <laughs> <laughs> Yo, because, because like anything whether you do a fast whether you do any kind of program mm -hmm. it is the hardest at the beginning yeah and even though I was given hope and I wanted to do it I still had such a revamping mm -hmm. of my food habits mm -hmm. and nobody likes to give up the comfort foods yeah so that first week was a lot of soups, a lot of mashed up food, whole foods, mm -hmm. and was eventually like really bland? it was curious. very bland. Yeah. Um, I had to spend a lot of time chewing. <laughs> I had to separate my meals out through the day, so oh, yeah. I went to overload my. You know, so there was a lot to it. It yeah. was a it was a a focus daily focus on my cooking and eating, cooking and eating, cooking and eating. That was like, eating. that was yeah. your life. That, that was it for, you know, two weeks straight. Mm -hmm. And, but I told myself, I give it a month. If, if things haven't changed within the month, then, you know, the color has you to be cut out, you know? Yeah. And I didn't like that idea at all. And lo and behold, it did. And one month turned to another, turned into another. All of a sudden, a year down the road, I'm feeling great. I'm off medicine. Mm. My blood work is turning Whoa. out great. All of a sudden, I'm seeing this light. This, this, oh my goodness. I may be able to plan out a life now, you know? I got really confident in what I was doing because I could see the food the way it worked. Mm. The way it worked. Was and he teaching you along? You know, 
not the way we do now. Yeah. Now in my program, I do a lot of coaching, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot of hands on. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of hands on until COVID. Now <laughs> I've gone, I've gone a lot electronic, a lot of recordings and all that. Which is probably a good idea because that's the way things are moving. You can scale it that way. Yes. I think you, I think yes. you get, um, if anyone's watching and they're, they're in pain or suffering, I think that going actually to see Virginia would be yes. awesome. She yes. does one-on-ones um, -on -ones here in yes, Nashville. Yes, I do. Which are really powerful, but I think to scale it and for yes. somebody that like maybe can't afford it or it's right. just inaccessible. Yeah, yeah I think can't that afford it into Nashville. Yeah. You know, one of my more successful programs is our healing lifestyle training program, mm -hmm. which is residential. Mm -hmm. And um, what does that look like? That that's a up to a ten day. Okay. And I say up to because I used to get people either on their way to the hospital or coming out of the hospital trying to sustain their health mm -hmm. and stay out of the hospital. So they were they were very challenging cases. Now I have an audience of people who are smarter about food. Mm -hmm. We have so much information. I think we're all getting more educated. Yes. Like the internet is helping tremendously. Yeah. And then and during it. COVID, it was like everybody learned about the immune system. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'm very aware of that all and, of this. And I've been teaching about microbiome since day one for 40 years. And now all of a sudden, the science has caught up with microbiome. And that's the. <laughs> And yes. that's the focus, you know. So <laughs> you're like, I was right all along. <laughs> it does work. People. It does work. And we were we were just talking about this uh, before we got on here, but um, Virginia's been in Nashville for a really long time, yeah. and went and did a um like a residency in Spain to yeah. teach this. And she said before she left, there was nobody like nobody was interested. There weren't yeah. any you know holistic workshops or right. farm table restaurants or yeah. nobody knew anything and the business was a bit uphill right yes and then when you came back in 2014 it was like See wow Nashville. <laughs> yes wow. Nashville woke up <laughs> yeah and I think yeah. like I think the west coast has been there probably a lot longer yes. than we have I think we're starting to catch up I yeah. think the world is starting to catch up yeah. as we just experience yeah. it for ourselves and I, I wish yeah. more people I love for more people to like understand macrobiotic nutrition yeah. as a whole but I think just yeah. getting to a place where you're actually eating vegetables instead of potato chips yes, all the time right that takes you like to, I, point, to a better place yes and thank you for bringing that mm -hmm. up because you know there's vegan mm -hmm. there's vegetarian mm -hmm. and I see macrobiotics as vegan or vegetarian with a focus mm -hmm. so it's more than not eating an animal or right. it's more than you know it's, it's about what your body needs to metabolize properly your body your body yeah your body needs to metabolize properly in order to avoid symptoms mm -hmm. which turn into disease that's super interesting yeah and symptoms are something that we need to learn about and we all have them differently mm -hmm. and my symptoms tell me what's going on so once even I today it, even today just you know I've been living this life for like I said over 40 <laughs> years yeah it hasn't made me bulletproof mm -hmm. but it's made me resilient mm -hmm. so I've, yes I've had to, to go through menopause yes I've had to go through you know cysts that popped up on the breast and the mm -hmm. ovaries and things like that but I haven't had to hang about it I just oh. work with my body and mm -hmm. I said I go get diagnosed mm -hmm. because we still need those methods mm -hmm. that sometimes when this is not obvious to us. Right, you can't just look at somebody right. most of the time. Right. Like, Why you can't? <laughs> or a blood test will show something mm -hmm. that you're not in particularly focused in on. And, but it's information. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, that's how I've taken it. It's information for me to shift. For me to know what to do. Because you're the manager. Right. Of my health. Yeah. Yeah. So you get the diagnosis and yeah. then you run you run yeah. in your direction. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what I like to teach people too is how to utilize the medical world. Mm. Because it is a way of information for us. It shouldn't be our diagnosis so much. It shouldn't be uh, a... Um, 
like a sentence or a something. A sentence yeah. for life. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to think of the word that meant you're stuck with this for yes. life. Yeah. But that's how it feels. Yes. I mean, if you would have accepted the sentence, you would have been dead. Yeah. I mean, exactly. very, very likely. And I want to have children. Yeah. I went ahead and have two beautiful children. And three grandbabies. And now three grandbabies. <laughs> you just show me pictures and they're super cute. <laughs> and, and this is how you pass it down too because disease is not just about yourself. It affects yeah. the whole family. In mm. the same way, mm. health affects the whole family. Mm. And so you could ripple it on. People mm. know when they walk in my house what kind of food they're going to get. Mm -hmm. Um, and my both my children, my son and daughter, are very proactive and very, you know, uh, committed mm -hmm. to clean eating. Really? And they're passing that down to their children. That's so beautiful. how beautiful! Look at that, that ripple effect yes. that, that you, you know? created through your journey <laughs> inadvertently, <laughs> right? Through my experience. Yeah. And, and had I not said yes to the possibility of something different. Mm -hmm instead of being scared into treatments, which many times we are, it's very hard to go against what we believe as the medical profession. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, they, they're doing their job. Doctors do their job, and they do it well, but they only know that. Mm -hmm. So if you trust your body that it does more than just that, then whatever diagnosis you get, know there's more to that story. Mm -hmm. Open yourself up to more than that story. Mm -hmm. because yes, that can be a part of it. Yes. Maybe or maybe not, but yes, there's there's a lot that you can do yeah. in your hands. And I think emotionally, which you know we talked briefly about, mm -hmm. I had to separate myself. I had to be who I am, experiencing mm -hmm. crumbs. Experience the takiyasu and try this. Can you I talk about that? Like, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't that person. I wasn't Virginia Crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I wasn't Virginia takiyasu and try this. Mm. I was Virginia. Mm. Who am I? What defines me? I didn't want my diseases to define me. And so. Whether That's it's cancer, or whether it's diabetes, whether there's anything that they tell you this is it for you, don't become the disease. Mm. I love that. That's yeah. never heard that advice before. Yeah. And I quickly start off with that. Mm. I quickly start off with, let's see what your body can do. Because it is a miracle in the working. Mm -hmm. And when you open up to it, you create that miracle. You allow it, you support it, you give it the raw materials to create that. And I feel like you, just you being here and like standing is, uh -huh. is hope and is inspiration oh for people. Yes. Because it's like, okay, yeah, I've been here too yeah. for a long time. And you know, now we have more natural medicine mm -hmm. available to us. So there's the concept of um, evidence-based medicine mm -hmm. as opposed to scientific proof of um, anecdotal medicine. Mm -hmm. And... And I used to tell way back when, when my doctors, I would ask them, I would say, can't you write in my chart that I'm well, that I feel, that I'm cured or whatever? No, 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 because you never heal the conditions. Even when you work? Even when nothing when else showed up. But because that was never proven, right? and how could food do this for you? We, we can't, can't explain that. No, we can't, we can't write that down. Does it have to be a, a study that's been like empirically tested? Yes, and I have been approached. I was approached um, by um, a new practitioner in a hospital in New York mm -hmm. and by Vanderbilt. Really? To do a clinical study on the food. And the food being this program that I have, mm -hmm. which I'll leave some of these yeah. with you, um, we cook macrobody meals mm -hmm. twice a week and deliver to your home or office. Mm -hmm. And these awesome. meals are a little different from, let's say, all the other wonderful, wonderful opportunities of meal delivery. Mm -hmm. In one, uh, they're seasonally, organically, all that mm -hmm. based. So that in macrobiotics, you really work with the body at different seasons. Yes, I remember 
remember a yeah. dinner we had with my dad where you yeah. were telling us, I think we were eating like a squash soup that yeah. you made, and you were talking about like the fat. Fall time. It was in fall. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely cold outside. And yeah. you were talking about how like those foods grow. Uh, yeah. I hope I'm getting this right. Yeah. But, like those foods grow and they're richer in fat because you yeah. eat a little bit more like of that is that, yes, is that right to, to warm the body up to warm the body into yes. the fall and winter interesting so, i did remember that yeah, yeah. oh good <laughs> <laughs> so when we prepare these meals mm -hmm. we also there's certain ways to prepare whole foods that make it digestively friendly as mm -hmm. we call it because a lot of people don't know their intestines are, are having trouble. Mm. There's other symptoms going on. What would what are like some common symptoms that you see? Is it always different, or do you see anything that's like a lot of this com a common symptoms that people don't relate to intestines mm -hmm. are a lot of skin issues mm -hmm. like acne, psoriasis, eczema, eczema yes, yeah. even shingles, mm -hmm. even things like that. Um, it is all about the health of the gut, how you sustain and how you survive pathogens. Mm -hmm. Because we're being attacked all day long oh, by yeah. viruses, bacteria, you know, stuff like that. And um, the immune system in our, which is mostly in our gut, mm -hmm. okay? The, the, the strength of the microbiome is what's going to determine whether you create a home for these or not. Mm, so or that you just immediately fight it off. Exactly. Right. And so when these build up, it may not show up in your intestines. Mm. It may come out through your skin. It may come out through a cough. It may come out through another symptom. That's that, interesting. Yeah. What about like runny nose, like a constant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've actually noticed that since I had COVID, I got COVID over Christmas yeah. in 2021. And I like basically since then, I feel like my breathing has been shallower. So when you were saying that earlier, I was yeah. making a note to myself. I need to make more conscious <laughs> breaths. Yes. Probably spend more time outside because yes, it's been definitely. cold really since yeah. I got it. So I've, I still spend a lot of time sedentary indoors. Yes. Oh, so, but definitely. I've also noticed like my nose running a lot. So yeah. now this is all, this is super yeah. interesting. I think if anyone's hearing this, would yeah. you say like, don't be afraid, just, you know, exactly. take note. Oh my you know. goodness. I think. You know, when COVID hit, I immediately jumped on understanding it mm -hmm. because that's what, what macrobiotic does. It gives you a magnifying glass to look at everything mm -hmm. and understanding and the energetic value. Mm -hmm. And so I jumped on that quickly to understand and I realized, wow, it is just a virus, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a tricky one, <laughs> but it's all within the environment here. And mm -hmm. why are they not saying this? Mm -hmm. It was much later that started talking about immune system strength. Really? You know, immune system protection. I guess I didn't pay attention to that. That's, yeah, that's but way at the beginning, you couldn't do anything. We were victims of this virus. Yeah. There's nothing more fearful mm -hmm. than feeling that you have no power over something. That is exactly right. I think I was, I think myself, yourself, a lot of people were really unhappy with the way it was handled yes. because it, yes. It was so fear driven. Yes. And it was like, yeah. And fear yeah. weakens the immune yes. system. We and kill social off. isolation does too, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, when you have a moment of fear, mm -hmm. you kill off half your good bacteria and your microbiome. Just a moment? Just a moment. A squirrel, a squirrel runs out in front of your car, and that second of <gasps> the reaction you have, you you kill off about half your your good bacteria in your gut, oh. and, and you, can that be rebuilt through just like a meal? Or it can, yeah. If you if you're actually have eating the, the right components in the meal. Oh, and this okay. is why when you Tell read this, <laughs> when you read this, we very much specify that these meals are digestive friendly fibers mm. to rebuild the microbiome because there is a way of cooking whole foods that you get the best quality of fibers which feed microbiome. Okay. Um, so white rice is not going to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole grain family is Do you like that. quinoa? Oh yeah. I had quinoa, quinoa for lunch. Never. Mixed it with a little like cashew yeah. yogurt and some salt and pepper and it was like delicious. Oh, yeah. A little vinegar. Yeah. A good it's the simplest of protein. I know. Yeah. And it is about retraining your taste buds mm -hmm. because we come into this or any That's of these. That's huge. Yes. Huge guys. <laughs> yes. 
re allow the time to retrain. Yeah. The more you chew, the more you clean out all the built up stuff mm. that we have in our taste buds. And that's like chemicals from processed food, yeah. artificial flavoring, mm -hmm. and all of that. It, even 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 uh, chemicals we're exposed to through our makeup, through our lipstick. Through oh. that, you know, these are glands. The, our skin absorbs and and resets mm. and eliminates. So this is live oh. here. So we're when I say metabolism, I mean metabolism of life, not just not just what comes in through the mouth. Yes, That's what we so see, what we hear. You know, oh. we really get affected. So. I agree with that too. Media, I think, is, I mean, and that's why, like, the COVID thing was crazy yeah. with all of the fear, but yeah. I think it goes the other way too. I, um, I have really noticed when I take in negative media, yeah. it, it really drains and depresses yes. me. But when I am disciplined and I'm, like, consistent with listening to positive podcasts yes. and interviews and just happy people and yeah. happy music... It's crazy because you're like, oh, I'm not in a good mood. I don't want to. Yeah. But when you just put yeah. it on, it really makes you feel better. Yes, like, it does. Hands down. And, and, and you don't even have to consciously be listen to it. Mm -hmm. Like I'll put it in the background. Mm -hmm. And it, it is your subconscious mind that holds on to those thoughts. Yeah. So that's what needs to be retrained. So one of the things I do, which I touched on a little earlier, is work with people and not identifying themselves as sick. Yep. I love it's, that. It's, it's not that you're denying it mm -hmm. or you're being blind to it because you're doing something about it, but don't hold on to that story. Mm -hmm. Know there's another story that you're going to be able to verbalize and write about you because that's so important for your mind to tell your body what it wants and when it needs to go. Mm -hmm. In that case, you're you're moving out of victim mode into that yes. hero mindset. Yes, yes. I'm the hero. You know, when I came back from Spain, I I had to rethink and revamp everything. Yeah. And I looked around and I thought, okay, what what do people need? What 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 empowerment can I give to people? Mm -hmm. And that's how I came up the, with the name of my business. You can heal you. You <laughs> can heal you. Yes. One meal at a time. Oh, I love that. Wait, say that one more time. You can heal you well meal at a time. Because it is that one meal, mm -hmm. uh, whether consciously eat, eaten or not, you know, when we fog eat, mm. when we're eating without paying attention. <laughs> what, I, what I admitted I was doing earlier. <laughs> when we do those things, that still affects us. Oh, yeah. You're, that you're still so affects right. us. So when you put consciousness into it, then your healing begins the moment that intention of cooking, chopping, cooking, cooking, mm -hmm. you know, and, and eating comes into play. So my program is based on self-responsibility, mm -hmm. self-awareness, mm -hmm. and, and, and then being proactive. Because mm -hmm. even though I'm gonna be able to provide some beautiful meals for you, mm -hmm. Your healing comes from you because your disease came from you. It oh, was your choices whoa. that got you where you were. And that's where that's where the responsibility yes. comes in. So that's huge. That just blew my mind. Yeah. You you're dropping nuggets <laughs> right now. That's that's huge all, though. We don't think I, like that, do we? No. Like, oh no. I'm just sick, it wasn't my family yeah. or whatever. And you think it's And I, I've worked with some really high end people who mm -hmm. have specialized cooks in their mm -hmm. home and but when it comes to diseases and I'm talking to them mm -hmm. I say okay you I'll, I'll teach you cook the meals that you need to have for mm -hmm. your condition to improve it but I want you to do the remedies I'm going to lay out yeah I want you you to do the therapies I'm going to lay out because that intention of proactivity mm -hmm. is what lines up every program in, in the cell Whoa. Yeah. That is so cool. So yeah. when somebody comes to see you and you do you do these like you say you don't do ten days anymore? Uh I, I, I do. You do. I, I, I didn't for two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I opened back up. <laughs> but now I've started a little differently because um because of COVID, a lot of people have had to heal emotionally. Yeah. And so I do three days, spa days where you come and you eat the food and we have you know therapies mm -hmm. and 
is more of an uplifting, let's clear your mind, let's clear your emotions. We do a lot of writing, we do, you know, a lot of cleansing in that way. Mm -hmm. And then I do have those people that still need that dire health, that reset. Day, that reset of their body. It's a reset and rehab you go through because the reset is, ooh, you have cancer, let's try to, you know. Let's nip this in the body. Yes, let's, let's reprogram what's happening quickly. Mm -hmm. And that happens within three or four meals that you get your body ah, alkaline so cool. and inflammation down. Yes. But you have to jump on it, yeah. you know. And then, um, and a lot of people want to do uh, treatment and this program. Mm -hmm. And when they do treatment, then the side effects are not as strong by doing the, the And when you program. say treatment, you mean like traditional okay. treatment? Yes, traditional, hospital. yes, medical treatment. Mm -hmm. And then they get the confidence up and realize, wow, I'm feeling better this way than oh, this way, you know? It. And let me cut back or let me talk to my doctor or whatever. Mm -hmm. I never take anybody off meds or anything. Yeah, I, mean, I just educate them in what's going on here. Yeah. What is this medicine supposed to be doing? I you love know? that because you're putting... Every every yeah. step of what you do is putting it into their hands. You made the disease. You yes. need to take a, you yeah. know responsibility yeah. for that. You can heal yourself yeah. if this feels yeah. good to you. Keep doing it. Yeah. If you want to do that, you can. Yeah. It's like so much empowerment, which is really yeah. yes. I think that our medical system like isn't again. It's a beautiful system yeah. in so many ways, but in so many ways, it does take the power out of your yes. hands. And like this is just fascinating. Yes. Like, we, we're gonna make every decision for you. Yeah, and we're not used to this. Like, no, this should be the norm, but yes, it's like groundbreaking. I think yeah. it's this is super fascinating, and it's and it's really interesting because it doesn't take that long for people to connect. They can't deny it. That's no. why the the residential program works so well. When you're under my roof, then you're <laughs> under my care. <laughs> So, so I can guarantee you in your I, home, you cook for them like breakfast, yeah. lunch, and dinner, and yeah. everything in between. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You said you. I can guarantee yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. I can guarantee results when you're under my roof. For, once you leave me, I can tell you what to do, but I can't guarantee anything because I can't be with you. Right. Twenty four seven, making sure. Yeah. But I say that because it's the power of food. This is the power of the nutrition going in us. If you know how to. Um, Prepare it, combine it, eat it correctly at the right times of day. I mean, there's a whole lifestyle yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. There's a whole lifestyle with this. And so that's when you end up learning. Mm -hmm. And then you graduate into sustainability. So there are, there are parameters we follow. Within the first 10 days, we change your blood quality quickly. With the, within the first three months, that programming that's in your blood uh, is going to the cells, and the cells are being reprogrammed. Mm -hmm. We Turn have, over. yes, yep. we have so many studies, that was mostly longevity studies, mm -hmm. that show that feeding the cells a certain way will slow down aging, mm -hmm. will regenerate the cell at a higher value, Wow. Because everybody's regenerating cells. Everybody is. From the moment you take that first breath into our constantly, life. Constantly? Like every minute, every second? Yeah, our skin is the one that rejuvenates quicker with sloughing off cells. But everybody's heard that in seven years. Yes. Said, yes. I mentioned that like in my very first video, actually. Yeah. I said, how crazy is it? I was like sitting there with a bowl of pumpkin seeds, and I was like, how crazy is it that this decision for me to eat pumpkin seeds it's telling my cells that I want omega-3s and yes. different fatty acids yes. but if I ate a bunch of like hot dogs okay. and ice cream that's what I would be telling my cells yes. you know yeah I don't know if that's exactly the right way to put it that's very like energetic but I find it fascinating yes and so, one has the right information for the cells mm -hmm. so the cells don't have to stress in their job mm -hmm. the other ones don't have enough hot dogs and ice cream or whatever don't have the right information for the cells, yeah. but your body's resilient and a survivor, so it works harder keep, to keep you alive, even though you're not providing mm -hmm. the right information for the cells. Therefore, you age quicker, you come down with disease, mm -hmm. because it's not enough good information for the cell. That's so interesting. Yeah. That's it at the cellular level. Whoa. You know? I 
love that. Well, I think we're getting a little bit close on time. I feel like I could talk to you all day, and I would love to have you back on because I feel oh, like we just scratched the surface today. I hope sure. everybody is liking this. But, yeah. Um, so we've, we've learned like a little bit about your backstory, yeah. your program, and what you offer. But if somebody wants to get in touch with you or learn more about it, sure. you've written a book too, right? Yes, I wrote a book. I'm on my second book and started Ooh. my third. Really? <laughs> um, Wait, do so you publish two and you're writing one now? No, I've published oh. one. Okay. I'm finishing my second and already I did. What is that one going to drop? Uh, as soon as I finish. <laughs> I'm at, I'm at that stage of, okay, okay, do I change anything else? Yes. Um, so the first one is about my journey. It's uh, controlling Crohn's disease the natural way. Mm -hmm. And that's the program I use. It's all about the journey. The second one is my experience mm -hmm. in these 30 years of teaching and working with people and all the new things I've learned mm -hmm. to add to and, and the way we change in our healing, because when I started teaching this, when I when I was told by God <laughs> that this is what you're going to do, mm -hmm. I was going to be a special education teacher. Really? But I kept being pulled this direction. Was so, this after your recovery? Yes. Really? Yes. I was going to go back to my life, and I oh. was a special ed teacher. So. Whoa, that's interesting. So it wasn't immediately like, No, oh, I didn't goodness. wake up one day and say, mm, I think I'll become an robot counselor. Oh, People so literally started knocking on my door. Are you kidding me? Hearing How about they know? Well, they were here at church, and the community. from communities, you know, they were here about my story and could you help my child? Can you help my mother? Could you help my husband? You were being called. So I was being called. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I finally gained in <laughs> and I started studying. I went to uh, 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 Philadelphia and uh, Massachusetts where the two um, macrobiotic uh, food and energetic schools mm -hmm. available at the time. And I decided, okay, God, you bring me the people because I don't know this, you know? I don't know how to work with you. So I started working from home. <laughs> Wow, and, you're ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I changed as the time says change. And when I would work with the people at first, food was that dramatic, mm -hmm. and that's all we needed to change. But then we began in the '80s and '90s having corn syrup in all of yeah. food yep. that. Or even now changing kids. the names for corn syrup, yeah. it'll be like glucose syrup because people have learned how, how sneaky yes. is that? Oh. They've learned how to look out for it, so they change yes. the name. Guys, yes. be careful. Just yes. read ingredient labels, yes. seriously. Yes. But anyway, dehydrated this and dehydrated that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you need to be careful. Yes. And then uh, GMOs hit, mm -hmm. hit the, the, the food chain, <laughs> and, and that really started tearing mm -hmm. us down. And so, as the food, got more tampered with, mm. our diseases got harder to turn around with just food. Because the food was also in itself a problem even exactly. when it was the right food. Yes. And so we had to go to different levels, more supplementation came in, more mm -hmm. other therapies came in, and the program just had to enhance. So now when I work with somebody, we always start with the food mm -hmm. because that's the basic. That has to change. Yeah. But I quickly tell them this is the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. So this is in stages. We get past this stage mm -hmm. and we see where your body is. You may not need anything else or we have a whole box of tools <laughs> to use. Yeah. So it's giving people hope that no matter what, there's gonna be some kind of answer there for them mm -hmm. to make them feel better yeah. than they are right now. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's become my motto now mm -hmm. is to teach and have you see See the difference because once you do, who can argue with that? Right? Who, who can knowledge who, cannot be taken yes, away? Yes, no, and yeah. your body doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. I used to tell people, I am the living, breathing, yes, scientific yes. proof. <laughs> And that's why people are knocking on your door now. <laughs> because, are you going to do those studies, by the way, or have you already? Well, we started to, um, um, in 2019, mm -hmm. we started with uh, Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. and then COVID hit, so mm -hmm. everything shut down. 
So now that things are moving again, yes, I probably will approach them. That would be super fascinating. Because yeah, yeah. I think once there's like empirical research, then it moves the needle on a larger yes, scale. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. And, and it's going to be interesting um, how we impact the food component into it. But mm -hmm. I think we can do it in such a way that there could be controlled groups and all mm -hmm. that that's needed. Oh, that's fascinating. Now so if that, anybody, I'll, I'll totally jump in. Okay. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah, no, it's going to be, you have to eat what we prepare for mm -hmm. you for this many days so we can take blood work and we can take all sorts of scientific mm -hmm. information. Um, now that things have opened up, and I'm doing more live things, like my cooking classes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so our cooking yeah, classes yeah. are super fun. <laughs> but if you are in Nashville or ever visiting, you should like yeah. come and check them out. I actually still remember, um, I remember one thing you told me, I think we made like a miso, but yeah. you're, oh, remind me of the, we just talked about him. He was like your Sue at the time. Oh, uh, Niles? Niles. Yeah. Yeah. He taught me about burdock root and how it, it you know, purifies the blood, and it actually helped my acne a lot. He told me, <coughs> excuse me, no, you're good. <laughs> he was telling me about how his um, daughter healed herself through burdock root. Yeah. And I literally went to Whole Foods, picked up, they look like logs, and I just yes. like crunched on them. <laughs> and then eventually I bought a tincture because I was a little more right, like, right. manageable. You but didn't anyway, have to cook it. You didn't have to cook it. <laughs> oh, I ate it raw. <laughs> That's probably what well. yeah, it worked out. Okay. But anyway, very impactful. <laughs> Maybe you need to listen better when you go to them. But they're super fun. <laughs> yeah, they once a month, and I really yeah. do focus on the organ systems that need to be uh, tended to during that month, mm -hmm. and um, give food uh, ideas mm -hmm. and menus, of course, recipes. And your newsletters are great too. Oh, good. That's yeah, good. Oh, I love those. Yeah. I was just, yeah. I was looking at one of your ones from yeah. August. But yeah, everybody go on her website. I'm gonna link everything. She's, she's got her book that she's working on. Mm -hmm. Number three is on the way, and then <laughs> we've got her website. If you live in Nashville, you should definitely do these uh, yeah. the meal deliveries. But there are so many ways. I'll, I'll link yeah. everything. But yeah. sorry. Okay. Okay. That'd be fun. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's, uh, and I put a lot on, um, uh, on the being done as we speak. Mm -hmm. A lot of the courses I did during COVID, mm -hmm. we're going to put those online because oh, I ended cool. up doing so much Zoom mm -hmm. and we recorded those. So that's, that's valuable be, content. Yes, it is. So. Yeah. You could put that on your YouTube channel mm -hmm. too. That would be, yeah, you could do all like that, all samples that. of it and then, yeah, all of the things. All that new stuff that I have to <laughs> Oh, I can, show, I can show you. It's not, it's really not very hard. Everything that I learned about YouTube, I learned from YouTube. Okay. Like, literally okay. just start searching things and there, there are like grade yeah. A courses that people yeah. will just give for free. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful platform. Well, if anybody wants to help with that. <laughs> <laughs> we can do a little bartering for sure. Yeah. Because that's way out of my comfort zone. Fair enough. <laughs> I actually may know somebody. Uh, we'll oh, talk after this. Okay, uh, great. I, yeah, I'm going to yeah, call yeah. somebody I can okay. help you with. But, oh my gosh, Virginia, this has been such a pleasure. I literally, yeah, we're coming up on an hour, so I think we need to cut it for the sake of time. Sure, this has been sure, amazing. Of course. Thank you so much for just being here and sharing your wisdom. Oh, and not only here, but like with the world for yeah. the last 40 years. I think it's, it's amazing. Oh, thank You're, you. I, I you are as far as a lot of people. I've been blessed. I yeah. do want to say that there's a bunch of wellness fest, veggie fest, clean food. I'm forgetting one that <laughs> we're going to be at just mm -hmm. just to answer questions. Are those and, here in Nashville? Yeah, they they're all in Nashville. Ooh, so really? look at them. So the first one, the yeah, the first one is April 30th. Okay. It's the clean I'll be here foodie. For that. Okay. I'll and be. then May 7th, the wellness fest. Mm -hmm. um, May 15th, the veggie fest. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know there was a I know, so they're, cool. and they're fun, and now that we're out and about, it makes it even more fun to go to. So oh. we'll be there, and maybe with some food samples, and just to answer questions. Come by here yeah. in the area, yeah. guys. Yeah. That'd be so fun. Oh, oh, I love it. This is awesome. You are such a light in the world. I'm really oh, happy. Thank you. Seriously, like yeah. everything you're doing is awesome. Well, um, thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Virginia. <laughs> Thank you Appreciate for having me. This, this is awesome. <laughs> Great Until time. next time. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed that as much as I did. Virginia is just so sweet and fun and supportive and an all around wonderful human being. So I'm really happy that she got the chance to come on. If you guys enjoyed this episode, then go ahead and click the like button and do subscribe. And you can share this with a friend too. If you have anyone who is maybe suffering from ulcerative colitis or 
Crohn's or any other autoimmune disease or just wants to start taking charge of their health, then this would be a great video for them. Virginia also does a lot of amazing work with children. Um, you can check out her website, I will link it below, and you can find her book, her one-on-one -on -one coaching, her cooking classes, which she also does virtually, so you can get some of that even if you aren't in, in Tennessee. Um, but if you are interested in doing a more intensive kind of stay, you can come and stay with Virginia in her home here in Nashville, and she will actually walk you through and teach you about the steps of um, getting well with macrobiotic diet. So. Again, none of this is medical advice. It's just here if you need it. Um, she's helped herself and it's a beautiful story. So if you feel connected to it at all, definitely click on the link below and learn more about Virginia. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you then.